Hello, and welcome to the Fisher Sports with your host, Matt Dravik. On tonight's episode, we will be covering the St. John Fisher men's volleyball star, <laughs> Matt Broderick. We usually don't have any athletes on this show, so it's something new here at Fisher Sports, and we are extremely excited to have you here. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so we're going to start off with some questions relating to like your daily schedule. Um, a lot of people are wondering, how do you manage your time between a athletic volleyball schedule and your academic schedule? Well, I think especially being at D3, the emphasis is definitely on academics. Mm. Uh, that has to be the main focus, so I make sure and get that done during the day, and then I lot time after 4 o'clock to my sports. So what's your major? Uh, political science and a minor in economics. Cool. Now, do you notice, does your class load maybe have a little bit more work than other students, or do you notice other students struggling a little bit more with this? You know, I think, uh, especially in the sciences, a couple of kids that were in biology major, uh, that was definitely hard on them. I think for mine, it's a lot of reading and analysis, which is hard, and I think that you have to a lot, a few hours every day, and as long as you're keeping up on it, uh, staying ahead of schedule, you should be fine. I think that goes with most things, so that's, that's cool that you have that opinion, though. Do you find yourself stressed out a lot during the season with such a tight schedule? Uh, not really. I mean, our coaches are great about it. They always make sure we know that uh, academics comes first. And if you have to come late to a practice, to a lift, whatever it is, they're fine with that and uh, they're very accommodating. Nice. Considering the volleyball team had its first season last year with a decent record in a very tough confer conference, predictions for what's going to happen this year? Uh, well, sadly, we lo uh, lost you know, some good seniors last year, some good leaders on the team, uh, but our freshmen are great coming in. And uh, last year, we were about 500. Didn't do as well in conference as we want, but like you said, you know, it was a tough conference. So uh, I think with those freshmen and some older guys that have been there and know what it's like, uh, I think you know, we could be at the top, make playoffs in our conference, hopefully. That's awesome. Do you think uh, you could see yourself winning the conference maybe in the next two years, or where do you think the team's going to end up? I think in two years for sure. I, we should be in the playoffs at least, playoff spot, which is top four teams in the conference. And uh, really, my focus right now is just building the program for years to come. It, you know, we realized last year it's not just about us. This is the first year we're you know, kind of building towards more in the future and getting nice. better recruits. So if I'm correct, you only have about two seasons left, though. Yes. So winning would be a pretty, yeah, a pretty yeah. ideal situation. So we're trying to you know, speed up the process before I get out of here. I'd like Absolutely. To, I'd like to. But. So on those game days, like, what's your typical routine? Do you have any superstitions? Do you do anything weird? Uh, not really. I mean, I used to play baseball here actually freshman year. Mm -hmm. And that sport is a lot about routine. Absolutely. Uh, especially, you know, your pre-pitch, you know, uh, mindset. But volleyball, you know, I wake up. I make sure I get my work done, like I said before, you know, you have classes that comes first and uh, just kind of maybe, you know, listen to some music. I was like doing that, you know, for a good half hour before the game and uh, just kind of focus on just volleyball, clear out everything else. That's awesome. How do you think the school has been supporting the team since you guys are such a new program here? It's been great. Fans have already been uh, showing a lot of support even last year. You know, I wasn't too sure what I'd expect for, uh, from the school. But turnout has been great. Fans have been great and really supportive every game. That's awesome. Do you think uh, you could give any advice to the, to the fresh meat on the team? <laughs> well, you know, I think the biggest thing is just have fun with it. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about it. We're still a young team. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be too worried about results. Just go out there, do what you can, you know, the rest will follow. There you go. So with kind of a, an intense major you got in the volleyball team, you ever find yourself uh, some free time to head down to the Rochester, oh, yeah. hit up the clubs. <laughs> I always make sure I uh, lot some time for that. Uh, you know, come Friday, uh, Sunday is usually my big homework day. So, you know, I, I, I get out there. I have some fun. Now, are you guys usually going out together as a team? Do you guys get along really well? Or is your team kind of like you have your groups and you just go your own way? Uh, that's a great thing, especially last year. We were all like a big family. You know, that's a little corny to say. But, you know, we uh, would all go out together. Sometimes we'd make some mandatory nights to go out. Uh, all of us, so it was all good. Well, absolutely. I mean, coming from someone that's played hockey their whole life, they almost say, like, the locker room is more important than the actual, like, appearance on the ice. If you can't keep it together with exactly. each other, you're not going to be able to make right, it out. Right, exactly. So. That's very important. Now, uh, as a baseball ex-baseball ex player, <laughs> and we have, I believe, the Yankees and the Rockies that just made the wild card, who do we think is going to take it all home? Real quick before we leave. I, I got to pick Yankees. I'm a Tigers fan, but, you know, I think I might get All right. Pretty, you know. Well, perfect. That's all the time we have today, and everyone have a great day.
Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Matt Dravik, and with me today to talk all things gaming is Tyler Hicks. Matt, <laughs> so Tyler, what is your gaming console of choice? Honestly, my gaming console of choice would have to be the Nintendo Switch. It's just so like, it's so portable. It's, it's like a hybrid between like a DS, Game Boy, and like an actual home console. So you play games like the new Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, Actually, I do. just got Breath of the Wild like two weeks ago, and I've been playing it like crazy. Oh, nice, nice. Um, one of the better games I have, um, and I'd have to agree with you. I've been playing the, uh, the Switch now. I got, sold both my Xbox, and I've played PS4, but, you know, I moved on to this. I like it. I think the games are a lot more, especially if you're not someone that cares too much about, like, online gaming. Right. I think it's, like, the perfect console because it allows you to have that, but at the same time, it's like, you know what? Here's a couple different ways to enjoy some video games and go out and have a good time. Right, I like that. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing though with the console is how like cool, like it's just awesome. You can take the controllers off of it. You can really play it the way you want. Motion control, the whole nine yards. So mm. definitely a little bit more creative than a lot of other systems out there. Yeah, I know, I know. So to kind of follow up on the Switch, like what games are you addicted to right now? Right now, I have to say it's a mix between Super Mario Odyssey, which is basically just Mario's return to the 3D platformer, like how he was on the Nintendo 64. And that's a really fun game. We played that for ages and ages. Had to restart though because my old Switch just died on me. Oh no! So way. yeah. <laughs> um, other than that, I like playing uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And I just got the Mega Man X Legacy Collection, so I've been playing a lot of the uh, Mega Man X games on there, and Ooh. they're really, really fun. That sounds like a blast. Now, if you had to pick in Mario Odyssey, what do you think your favorite, like, I'll call them costumes, some people might call them skins, but like, what's your favorite costume that you can put on Mario? Um, my favorite costume was actually, it was, an, uh, it was an idea that I got from a YouTuber, was the, like, they did Mario with the swimming trunks and like the like with the Mario Sunshine hat. Head. No, the like the old man like the aviator head. So just like old man Mario, just like just going in, just just messing around and My just like like old man, just he's lost in this city. Just I like the resort outfit with the Mario Sunshine hat. So he's just got his sunglasses I know, on, right? just chilling. <laughs> um, so I think with the up and coming months. There's a couple really big games coming out. Which one are you looking forward to the most? Mm, I got, it's gonna be basic. It's gonna have to be uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. What else would it be? I mean, like, let's be real. I, <laughs> I mean, mean, coming out in December, literally. right before Christmas, right? I think this is gonna be in everyone's wish list for Santa Claus. Um, they're definitely gonna have to put production up to a max. I know, I've just been just, uh, when I heard the, the Nintendo Direct, back in June, where they were releasing the, the actual title for it, I literally like, skipped work just to go oh, watch no it. Way. Actually, no way. Actually, no, actually. It was, um, I just got to work right as it started, and I was like listening to the YouTube um, live stream in my car, just riding back from work, just going 70s, swerving in and out, <laughs> just like, I need to get home as soon as possible. I need to watch this. Exactly. Now, for me, there's only one thing I really need to know. You think my boy Waluigi is going to make it into Smash? I mean, hey, anything's possible. We got Isabel from Animal Crossing, and she's <sighs> just awful. Just she's awful, the worst. Literally, I was not. I was not excited when she got announced. I was like, really? Out of anyone, you could have picked Waluigi, man. Tons of people. Now, I think to, with our final question of the day, I'm going to have to ask you. With recent uh, up and coming news, there's Sony has released a statement saying they will now accept cross-platform gaming with Xbox. What do you think? I mean, it took them long enough. I like, know. Even Nintendo, more or less, because of like, because it's mo I mostly think it's because of Fortnite mm -hmm. that they're doing cross-platform play now, only because of like, how, how popular it's been getting. So they're just trying to keep up with the industry standards, you know? Yeah. I definitely think it's important for people to stay on their toes, but you know, Tyler, it's been a pleasure having you today. Um, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in, and hopefully next week you can join us again as we talk a little bit more about the online video game culture. I'm your host, Matt Dreyrick. Thanks, and have a great day.
Welcome to today's episode of Buddy Talk. I'm your host, Emma Paradise, and today I'm honored to be hosting St. John Fisher College Best Buddies representative, Kenny Brock. How are you doing today, Kenny? I am doing very good. Everything's fine. Awesome. What does Best Buddies mean to you? How does being a part of it make you feel? Being a part of Best Buddies makes me feel amazed. I feel like I'm so special. I like, I like being a part of different school events and being part of events with my mentors and gain, and gain along together. Awesome. What does it mean to you to have a friend? What really means to, for me to have a friend is friendship. And, and showing the true mean, like hanging out together and showing all your interests. It's important to show all your interests in, in creativity and all your interests in friendship and, and things that you like to gather. Cool, so you like to do creative things with your friend? With, with, with a few of my friends I've met in the past, I have a few friends named, Ta named Tyler Kimball and Bran Andrzak, and the list goes on. Nice. Is there anything that you can tell me about your life with a disability? Yes. My life with a disability was definitely very hard for me. I've gone through several intern, I mean, I've gone through several, excuse me, sorry. It's okay. I've gone through several intern, I mean, I've gone through some, I've gone through several challenges when I had some anger and anxiety issues when it's from my sister or things that bother me and stuff like that. And, 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 and health concerns. But what, but what really is to me is I find the true meaning of help and, the, and, and I always let my parents know whenever they need me. Nice, so we're lucky enough to have Best Buddies here at Fisher, so you, can you tell me how Best Buddies has made a difference in your life? Best Buddies have made a difference in my life because it really changed things of how I look at school events. I've been, I've been going to a lot of school events since Rogers, Dake, and Arondequoit High School, and a few and a few other things. And joining Best Buddies makes me feel like I'm a one a kind champ, one of a kind champ I met in general. So, what are you most excited for now that Fisher is directly involved with Best Buddies? Why I'm so excited now is I get to do more events, especially with Justin. I had fun with Josh before he graduated, but on, on the other hand, Justin will, will definitely be a good person to keep track of all the events. So what do you like to do in your free time? I've heard that you enjoy making videos. I make a lot of videos. I made a whole production company called Kenny Brock Pictures. I did a few feature films like Povio Palace and Kenny Senior Movie. And what I like to do other than videos is draw. Cool. So would you be interested and would you enjoy learning about making more videos with a buddy? I would definitely be interested in it. It would be a guarantee to do that. I would be guaranteed to do whatever it takes. That's all the time we have for today, so thank you, Kenny, for um, participating in the interview. Thank you. And remember to spread the word and to end the word. Good morning and welcome to Cardinal Television. I'm your host, Marty LaFica, and across from me is my guest, Sam. How you doing, bro? Great to have you here. Doing great. Thanks for having me. What made you choose St. John Fisher? Um, 
The media and comm program, and mostly basketball because I was recruited from uh, Coach Corniker, who is not here anymore, but the new coach who was the assistant my freshman year has, has taken over, so really brought me in here. Yeah, that, that's a very good reason. Has your stomach adjusted to the Lackman food yet? Nope. <sighs> no. Had a cheeseburger today for lunch. Already, uh, already came out of me. Oh, so. wow. That's very <laughs> detailed, but... Uh, I bet it was a wide awakening for you. Yes. So before we get into the standard questions, like what's your favorite class and all that, how are the ladies treating you? The parties? I heard, a, heard you got a lot of confidence swelled up in you. <laughs> parties are good. Ladies are good. I actually just went to a NAS party the other night. Uh, it didn't end up so well. So, uh, yeah, parties are actually terrible. Yeah, not good. Not good. I guess I'll have to forgive you for going to the NAS party, but we'll, we'll continue. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, since this is your first year, no disrespect intended, I'm going to stuff you in a locker. <laughs> What's one thing that you perceive that Fisher could do better? Anything you want changed or edited? You not to put me in a locker? Uh, that would be number one. Um, Don't worry. Number two, the parties. Okay, definitely going to have to get the parties up. Uh, yeah, I agree, but it seems like you found your squad and you guys love to chill in the SGA. I know there used to be beanbags and a flat screen TV in there. It was lit, bro. <laughs> you could sleep in there and have movie night. Should you not want to go out that <laughs> you can sleep in there and have movie night should you not want to go out that night? Are you interested in any clubs here? Any sports? Obviously basketball. <laughs> I play basketball. <laughs> um that confused me. Can you reread that, please? Uh, I can't. He scrolled down. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, he just scrolled right in the middle of it. I'll just move on to the next okay. question. It was, uh, what is your favorite NBA team? NBA team's got to be the Knicks. The Knicks? Yep. All right, I agree. Who's your favorite player on the Knicks? Ah, Porzingis has oh, to be. Porzingis, yep. the, the unicorn, Hopefully we get baby. Kyrie. Hopefully. We'll see. All right, moving on to your bio, which I'm totally shit in. How's that working out for you? <laughs> I don't take bio, but um, if I did, I'd probably be terrible in it. Um, yeah, not a big science guy. So, Wow, that's cool. You see, I used to mix <laughs> up bio and chemistry and always thought of Breaking Bad. Definitely not for me. Well, we've got to wrap up, bro. So as a prize, I'm going to give you 30 seconds of unedited total free speech time. Say anything you want. Huh, let's see. I play basketball. Okay. Party stink. Party stink. I'm going to do a little bit of a recap. Um, yeah, maybe I'm going to interview you. Okay, yeah, let's do that. What's your major? My major here is media and comm, and I'm a sport management minor. Okay, uh, play any sports? I do not play any sports here, but I consider myself a decent golfer, and I enjoy playing golf. Uh, not well, not well. I don't play it well enough to be on the team here. Vinyl guy? Big vinyl? vinyl? Big vinyl? Like as in vinyl records? No, as in vinyl nightclub. Oh, I've never been. You've never been to vinyl? No. Gotta go. Gotta go. Yeah, no, I'm... It's a little greasy, but gotta yeah, go. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Is big, that in Rochester? That is in Rochester. Big Thursday night uh, okay. club. As uh, you can see, I'm not really a uh, party, party guy. Yeah. Okay, that was in my next question. Mm. Do you party? Yeah, no, not really. <laughs> uh, not a huge party guy. Spend most of my days out on the golf course okay. or uh, doing school work, I guess. Okay. I'm more of a grinder worker. Nice. What's your favorite food in the dining hall? Food in the dining hall? Well, I really like cyber downstairs. Every day I go down there and get some type of coffee or something like that. So I'm, I'm a pretty easy guy. Hmm. Easy Starbucks to or Dunkin'? Oh, Dunkin' all day. Well, I did live on the West Coast for a little bit, and I went Starbucks. I went super rogue and started to enjoy Starbucks. But I'm definitely, after I have come back to the East Coast, reassured myself as a Dunkin' guy. Favorite vacation spot? Favorite vacation spot? Well, I have to say if I'm going to go for like a beach type vacation, probably Los Angeles. But if I'm going to go with a northern vacation, maybe uh, like Seattle or Portland, Oregon. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Cool. So that's all the time we're going to have for today. Thank you to my friend Sam for coming on the show. And that is Fisher News Desk. Hello, and welcome to the Fisher Sports with your host, Matt Dravik. On tonight's episode, we will be covering the St. John Fisher men's volleyball star, Matt Broderick. 
We usually don't have any athletes on this show, so it's something new here at Fisher Sports, and we are extremely excited to have you here. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so we're going to start off with some questions relating to like your daily schedule. Um, a lot of people are wondering, how do you manage your time between a athletic volleyball schedule and your academic schedule? Well, I think especially being at D3, the emphasis is definitely on academics. Mm. Uh, that has to be the main focus, so I make sure and get that done during the day. And then I lot time after 4 o'clock to my sports. So what's your major? Uh, political science and a minor in economics. Cool. Now, do you notice, does your class load maybe have a little bit more work than other students, or do you notice other students struggling a little bit more with this? You know, I think, uh, especially in the sciences, a couple of kids that were in biology major, uh, that was definitely hard on them. I think for mine, it's a lot of reading and analysis, which is hard, and I think that you have to allot a few hours every day, and as long as you're keeping up on it, uh, staying ahead had a schedule, you should be fine. I think that goes with most things, so right. that's, that's cool that you have that opinion, though. Do you find yourself stressed out a lot during the season with such a tight schedule? Uh, not really. I mean, our coaches are great about it. They always make sure we know that uh, academics comes first. And if you have to come late to a practice, to a lift, whatever it is, they're fine with that and uh, they're very accommodating. Nice. Considering the volleyball team had its first season last year with a decent record in a very tough confer conference, predictions for what's going to happen this year? Uh, well, sadly, we lo uh, lost you know, some good seniors last year, some good leaders on the team. Uh, but our freshmen are great coming in. And uh, last year, we were about 500. Didn't do as well in conference as we want, but like you said, you know, it's a tough conference. So uh, I think with those freshmen and some older guys that have been there and know what it's like, uh, I think you know, we could be at the top, make playoffs in our conference, hopefully. That's awesome. Do you think uh, you could see yourself winning the conference maybe in the next two years? Or where do you think the team's going to end up? I think in two years for sure. I, we should be in the playoffs at least, playoff spot, which is top four teams in the conference. And uh, really, my focus right now is just building the program for years to come. It, you know, we realized last year it's not just about us. This is the first year we're you know, kind of building towards more in the future and getting nice. better recruits. So if I'm correct, you only have about two seasons left, though. Yes. So winning would be a pretty, yeah, pretty yeah. ideal situation. So we're trying to you know, speed up the process before I get out of here. I'd like Absolutely. To, I'd like to. But. So on those game days, like, what's your typical routine? Do you have any superstitions? Do you do anything weird? Uh, not really. I mean, I used to play baseball here actually freshman year. Mm -hmm. And that sport is a lot about routine. Absolutely. Uh, especially, you know, your pre-pitch, you know, uh, mindset. But volleyball, you know, I wake up. I make sure I get my work done. Like I said before, you know, you have classes that comes first. And uh, just kind of maybe, you know, listen to some music. I was like doing that, you know, for a good half hour before the game. And uh, just kind of focus on just volleyball, clear out everything else. That's awesome. How do you think the school has been supporting the team since you guys are such a new program here? It's been great. Fans have already been uh, showing a lot of support even last year. You know, I wasn't too sure what I'd expect for, uh, from the school. But turnout has been great. Fans have been great and really supportive every game. That's awesome. Do you think uh, you could give any advice to the, to the fresh meat on the team? <laughs> well, you know, I think the biggest thing is just have fun with it. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried about it. We're still a young team. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be too worried about results. Just go out there, do what you can, you know, the rest will follow. There you go. So with kind of a, an intense major you got in the volleyball team, you ever find yourself uh, some free time to head down to Rochester? Oh, yeah. Hit up the clubs? <laughs> I always make sure I uh, lost some time for that. Uh, you know, come Friday, uh, Sunday is usually my big homework day. So, you know, I, I, I get out there. I have some fun. Now, are you guys usually going out together as a team? Do you guys get along really well? Or is your team kind of like you have your groups and you just go your own way? Uh, that's a great thing, especially last year. We were all like a big family. You know, that's a little corny to say. But, you know, we uh, would all go out together. Sometimes we'd make some mandatory nights to go out. Uh, all of us, so it was all good. Well, absolutely. I mean, coming from someone that's played hockey their whole life, they almost say, like, the locker room is more important than the actual, like, appearance on the ice. If you can't keep it together with exactly. each other, you're not going to be able to make right, it out. Right, exactly. So. That's very important. Now, uh, as a baseball, ex-baseball ex player, <laughs> and we have, I believe, the Yankees and the Rockies that just made the wild card, who do we think is going to take it all home? Real quick before we leave. I, I got to pick Yankees. I'm a Tigers fan, but, you know, I think I might get All right. Pretty, you know. Well, perfect. That's all the time we have today. And everyone have a great day. Hi. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Nick Kinney.
Today we're going to be getting to know one of St. John Fisher's finest, <laughs> Miss Abby Braddon. Thanks for taking the time to come on today. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us. Now, Thanks. are we ready to get started? I'm ready. Oh, great. All right. First question. What do you think the best part about Fisher is? Teachers? The students? Maybe the environment? I think maybe a combination of everything. So I think my favorite part about Fisher is the size. I like that it's a smaller place. Mm -hmm. So I get, you know, one-on-one -on -one interaction with the teachers a little bit, but it's a small enough class where I can still feel like I'm involved and it's a discussion base. So and I also love the students and I love the environment. So now for the flip side, what is the worst part about the campus? Don't be afraid to ruffle a few feathers with this one, too. I also think that I hate the size. I hate that everyone knows everything about everyone. So sometimes it feels a little bit like high school. I feel you. The T gets too big for this campus. Sometimes. Yes, it does. I think that's my least favorite thing. I have word that you may be joining the podcast club. Is this correct? Yes, actually. There's a meeting on Thursday, if anyone is interested. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about joining a podcast club. Can you tell us a little bit more about this podcast club? What um, it's about? What kind of shows are going to be on there? I don't know a ton yet because the first meeting is on Thursday, so there's not a ton established. But I know that Fisher currently does have a podcast that they do. Um, Dr. Vicker does it, if any of you guys know her. Um, she runs it, and they do a weekly podcast, I want to say. And so basically they're going to keep doing that, but try and get students involved. And then they're also going to help teach um, so at like weekly meetings and stuff. So it'll teach you how if you want to go to your own podcast and set that up. What sparked your interest in podcasts? I I listen to podcasts personally, so I wanted to like I've always had an interest in like how to do my own. I've always wanted to have my own podcast. Um, me and my roommate have always thought it would be really fun to just kind of like record ourselves doing stuff, and um, you know just play it back and see if it'd be any good, but we've always been too scared to try. Do you have like an idea of like what topic your podcast would be? Any like sort of? I don't know. We think it'd be fun to just like talk about just different com conversations and like have our friends on it and then have them conversate and stuff. But I don't, we never really pursued it, I guess. Are you an avid listener of podcasts? Like do you currently listen to one that's your favorite? I wouldn't say I'm an avid podcaster, but I love to listen to celebrities podcasts. So I listen to like Anna Ferris has one. Um, I really love hers. She has a lot of guests on it. I listen to one called Yoga Girl. Um, she's hers is really good. Hers is probably my favorite. Um, yeah, so that's where I kind of got the idea from. So did you ever think about having like a communication minor to help like propel this, or was this just like a, a spur of the moment type? You know what? Let's do it. I actually do have a communication minor. Oh, wow. So it's media and communication. And that's kind of where I got my idea from. And I don't think I ever would have been able to, you know, have the ideas or known how to do it without that minor. Interesting. Well, I wish you all the best with the podcasts. And we all know that Rochester is a great place for people of all ages. And is, is there anything that you would do for people of all ages to come to Rochester? It's a great place to have a family. But what are some things in the city that you love? Um, I think the city is really great for a lot of different things. Personally, I love to eat in the city. There are so many different types of things you can go eat and drink and, you know, sit around and hang out. So, um, it's a really good place to be if you're like a foodie, I would say. Garbage plate, infamous garbage plate. Yes, So for this sure. city has a, a couple of great minor league sports. Have you ever got the chance to catch a game or two? I have. I've been to an Amherst game just a few times. I think I've been to like maybe one or two Red Wings games. Not a huge sports fan, but it's definitely fun here and there. Our Amherst are supposed to be red hot this year, so we should catch a game while we can. Definitely should. And um, so tell me about your majors at St. John Fisher College. So I'm a marketing major and I have a minor in media and communications. So do you have like a path that you're, you're eyeing? I'm not totally sure yet. Uh, I'm working on figuring that out, but don't know for sure quite yet. <laughs> that's good, that's good. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate it so much. Thank you for having me. We'll catch you <laughs> next time on CNN. <laughs>
and welcome to another wonderful episode of the critically acclaimed show. Is that weave really real? I'm your host, Joe Gala, and joining me today is none other than Bailey Soper herself. And uh, we're introducing a new segment here called What Led You Here? So, Bailey, I have to ask you, you're a pre-farm major and uh, you've been here for a little bit of time now, so can you tell our viewers how hard your workload is? Uh, not gonna lie, it's, it's a lot. Uh, you have to fit a lot into the two years before the pharmacy program. So we do have a two plus four program. Uh, so you have a lot to fit in, um, all the chemistry courses. It's a lot of science, so it is a lot of work, but it'll definitely be worth it in the long run. Nice. That has to be so stressful. Yeah. Now, you're from, is, is it Governor New York? Governor. Governor yep. New York, which <laughs> is pretty far away. A little bit. Uh, so what is there to do in Governor New York? It's so funny when people ask me that because there isn't really a lot to do. Uh, we had a bowling alley, but it closed, and that was kind of like the thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to a lot of different Amish stands. Yeah. Nice. Certainly a, a, a different life from what you would find here. Um, so I want you to tell me a little bit about what you're involved with here. What is your, you know, what is the... Um, I am involved with Fisher Players on campus. We are actually doing Legally Blonde this semester. Uh, it's going to be a great show. Everyone should come see it. Um, yeah, that's, again, with the large workload, can't really be involved in a ton, but Fisher Players is definitely something that I'm happy to be involved with. So. Isn't, she just, isn't she just the cutest, folks? I mean, come on, let's just, we just got to... <laughs> no? Okay. Um, <laughs> We're going to move on to our rapid fire section, so you better get ready because we're going to uh, throw some, some hard hitting questions at you. Okay? I'm ready, yep. I'm ready for these questions. You are? I am. Okay. What's your go to comfort food? Oh, this is rapid fire. I'm supposed to be answering these quickly. Um, I, I'll say pizza. All right, uh, favorite soda to drink? Um, Mountain Dew. Nice. Dream home? Um, I guess a big home? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, where? What state? Um, I really like Vermont. Ne yeah. Vermont in the United States? Yes, yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, and then what would you buy if you won a million dollars? Ooh, that's a tough question. I guess I'll just say a house in Vermont. That's a cop out, Bailey. Come on, give us, give us, <laughs> um, give us the tea that we're looking for. Oh, I don't know. Something that I would buy if I won the lottery. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What would you buy if you won the lottery? Uh, I would buy more lottery tickets. I don't know if that's a smart idea. Yeah, no, I think mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe invest it. Yeah. All right. So uh, anyway, we're just gonna uh, let's. We're gonna go off the books here, okay? okay. We're gonna we're gonna go off the record. Okay. All right. Is that okay? Is yeah. That okay with you. All the cameras are off right now, so uh, oh, it's, yeah. it's all good. Okay. So what exactly? I mean, you talk about how, how busy of a student you are. What are you really willing to do for a uh, four point mm. and, and and don't be shy. <laughs> you know, it's like what do you, what would you be willing to? I mean, like anything. Oh, I don't know. That four point pretty yeah, you pretty know. important. Yeah. Getting into like pharmacy school, you, a little, little stressful. Right. Like, what would you, ha what would you do? Hmm. What would you do? I'll ask you that question. You know, are you, <laughs> do you think this is your show or something? I mean. Yeah. I mean, might as well. You know, I don't really think I'm, I'm the one who's qualified to answer that sort of thing. Well, why not? Who put, who put you up to this? Okay. Was it, was it Nick? It was, yeah, it was secretly Nick Kinney. It was? Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to have to have a word with him right after we take our break here from Is That Weave Really Real? Okay. So it's been a pleasure to have you, Bailey. Pleasure I've to be been here. Joe Gala. Don't interrupt me. I'm signing off. Hi, I'm your host, Nick Kinney. 
And today I'll be interviewing illustrious Joe Gala. Now, just to start off, we'll get to know you a little better. So Joe, if, if you could pick one quote from either TV or a movie that describes you best, what would it be? Nothing. Not even if you ain't first, you're last? No, I wouldn't. I would probably wouldn't pick anything. Well, then what's your thoughts on those, if you ain't first, you're last, because it's true? If you ain't first, you're last? Well, I mean, I don't know. You are last. Who's the la I'm the last? Are you first? Are you the last? Are you first? What makes you first? If you're last, I'm first. There's only two of us on this side. Well, I, I know. That's not what I'm... Jesus Christ. Can we get, can we like get anybody that's better than him on this show? Like, is there, do you have like a budget? Is there like a problem here? Or like, yeah. is this, is, it's just I feel like, like we've got off on the, on the wrong foot here. It's just, if like, it's either you're really serious or you're really funny. Like there's really no in between. So like, I either need to well, be I, really hey, funny. Well, hey, you know, if you're not first or, or last, really right? Serious. Yeah. So like, which one is it? First or last? Anyway, so there's like posters. Of all the different student films here at SJFC, and uh, I've seen you on a few, like the one of, of you playing pool, like really cool. I think the photography is amazing. Right? And then, uh, who knows, you're laying in the bed with a bunch of ladies. Now, how'd you get into film? Um, I don't know either of those films that you're talking about. You know? That's cool. No, but I do like film. I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been doing <laughs> film stuff since... Am I just going to get no respect on this set? Like, is this, <laughs> is this what I'm doing? Can we cut to commercial? Listen, you know what? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Can we just? I just, I really. Wait, where's the phone? I would need to. No, eyes on me. I just, I, I wouldn't want to have to, you know, bring my manager into this or anything like that. So no, let's just try to. Dude, you're gonna, get, you're gonna get paid. Listen, no one's watching this. I'm giving thing. you public. No. Yeah, nobody's watching this. I'm giving you publicity, dude. All right, all right. You're, doing, Jimmy you're not first, you're last. So I just mean. go with it. Jeez. All right. <laughs> So I don't know what's going on next week, but next week we've been in, in talks with uh, TBS, Turner Sports, all these things, all these other people that are way better. Are than you me. talking about who you have on next week? I mean, can we focus on who's here this week? I just don't. So know. if if you're unaware, you know, I, I just I really don't like I don't like the way that you know I don't like the way you're, you're talking to me. If here, you're I unaware think. of who this is, this is Joseph Gala, uh, one of the <laughs> the best actors here. Um, you know what? Campaigns. According to who? What's your what's your source? According to who? Yeah. Professor. Who said I'm the best actor here? Who said I've it? I've never. I've never. No, once, I really don't. I've know. never it's once just on the teleprompter. I read whatever's on the teleprompter. I've never. That once is my job. Here. Acted in my life, Nick Kinney. Everything I do is real. And when I look you in the eyes and tell you that I don't like the way that you're conducting this interview, I'm being a hundred percent real. And if I have to take this into the ring with my buddy Duke Slapjack, then then that's exactly what I'll do. I just. I. I don't know. I, I don't mean to get hot headed on your show here, but I got the Brooklyn Crusher. On speed dial. Oh, you've got the Brooklyn <laughs> Crusher. Okay, well, how's the Brooklyn He's Crusher doing? He just fell 400 feet off of the Hall in the South, so I don't even know how Brooklyn Cl Crusher how's is doing. How's he doing? He's got three kids and $10 million. I don't care. You know what? He, bro he Brooklyn Crusher got crushed so bad, he moved to the Bronx. That's what I heard. Yeah, because he crushed Brooklyn so hard. What else is he going to do? Live on the bricks that he just crushed? You know what? I don't like how the fact that you always have to bring up the Brooklyn Crusher as if he's going to fight all your battles for you. I'm just saying that I got Duke Slapjack here, the very best wrestler to ever step foot in that ring. And, and you, you you think that you're, you're just better than me just because just you host this show here that, that doesn't even have a name? I mean, it's what what is your name? Who is Nick Kinney? I mean, it's, I'm not hearing him right now. <laughs> la 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 la. I don't appreciate the silent treatment. Hey, hey, I'm a guest on your show, okay? You, I can't. I, baby shark. I wish. <laughs> don't <laughs> sing baby shark. You know how I feel about that. Baby you know my, shark. <laughs> you know the surfing accident that happened in 2006. How dare you bring up? Oh, I forgot you the, don't have legs. That's why they brought yeah, you. Yeah, Nick Kitty. I don't have you. legs. Is it That's you... why I arm wrestle. No, is that why, I is that why you're thinking better than the Brooklyn no. Crusher? Because you don't have legs? I don't, think, I don't have any beef with the Brooklyn Crusher whatsoever. I'm just saying that if Duke Slapjack gets into that steel cage with the Brooklyn Crusher again, there's not going to be anything left for the Brooklyn Crusher to crush because he'll only be able to think about it while he's falling 655 feet off of the Hell in the Cell cage. And it, that's all he's going to be able to think about. And all that you're going to be able to think about is how you disrespected a legless man on your show. That's what you got against? Oh my gosh. Like it's an unfa it's unfair. It really is. Like, you know, I, I just I don't understand this how this thing. interview got so far off track. I mean, here we were. I was so excited to have this going on and now we're now you're bringing up the Brooklyn Crusher who slept with my wife, I'm, mind you. And that I'm, was before I'm I really lost glad my life. that you came today 
And uh, it's, are you glad that I came today? Because it it's been fun, man. Let's. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry. We'll about see all you that next stuff. time. I'm sorry. It's, love you, man. I love you too. <laughs>Hello there, I'm your host, Murphy Pendleton, and this is Behind the Music on MTV. Joining me today is a legendary musician, Jimmy Knuckles. Hello. Hello. Uh, thanks for having me today. Uh, that's fantastic. You know, just wonderful that you're here today. Before we get into the big stuff, I have to ask, is Jimmy Knuckles your given name, or is that just like a stage name, or what's going on with that, man? Uh, well, actually, my given name is Johnny Pajamas. Gotcha. Um, but being in deathcore metal, you know, needed something a little, a little more rough around the edges, so from Johnny Pajamas to Jimmy Knuckles. PJs aren't, aren't rough around the edges for you? Not Some either. PJs could be, but not mine. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for settling that for me. I'm gonna have to collect my bet soon after this. Uh, uh, anyway, back to business. So, Jimmy, we're here today to discuss your newest album, the H I'll Harpoon Your Girlfriend If You Know What I Mean. Jesus. <laughs> First of all, how did you come up with the title for this one? It's a doozy. Well, you know, this one time I was sea fishing. Of course. And uh, I had a harpoon. And my friend's girlfriend wasn't, you know, I asked her to get us a soda. She wouldn't get us a soda. And I looked at him and I said, hey, tell her to get us a soda or I'll harpoon your girlfriend in the heart. And he was like, man, that's a really good album name. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, that kind of is a good album name. So uh, we wrote it down on a piece of legal paper, and that's kind of how it all came to. What a guy. I, was, I thought Harpoon was a euphemism for something else or had something to do with, you know, maybe related to Poon of some kind, but, you know, that's fine, whatever. Uh, anyhow, uh, the album cover has been generating a lot of controversy. Uh, why did you decide to have the cover feature so many scantily clad women making pancakes? Um, well, you know, like I said, you just, sometimes pancakes are the way to everybody's heart. Everyone likes pancakes. Everyone loves making, like, bacon pancakes, um, but. And naked women. Well, yeah, that too, but, you know, we gotta remember, we gotta keep it sensible for all people that want to listen to our death core metal. Of course. Um, so that's why we had them partially nude, not fully nude, using the pancakes to, um, Accent the women. Tasteful. Yes. And remember, you can get uh, I'll Harpoon Your Girlfriend in the Heart um, anywhere, like Walmart, Sears, um, online, Target. I, I hear that it's, uh, it's selling wildly. It's going triple platinum. Uh, all kinds of records are being sold in the music industry. What do you plan to do with this ludicrous amount of money? Um, well, the first thing I'm going to do is buy Disney World and tell everyone they are not allowed to go to Disney World anymore, and I'm going to go and ride all the rides by myself. No lines. No lines. That's the biggest thing. Um, I think the next thing is I'm going to buy the Catholic Church and turn it off, um, uh, and then I'll probably end up getting a red panda or something and building an exhibit in my backyard. Is that exhibit open to the public or just for, just for you? Um, close friends and family. Close friends and family. Okay, we'll not see you there then. No. All right, you know what? Honestly, I'd probably do the same thing. You know, it'd be great to buy Disneyland, Disney World, whatever you want. Yeah. You know? And then not have to wait in line. done with it. Yeah, so I, uh, I was hearing some rumors, though, that uh, before recording, you had to replace your longtime drummer, Skits McGee, after he spontaneously combusted. Is that true? Well, we, we always had suspicion that he was a witch. Uh-huh. Um, of course. A witch in disguise. But he always said, no, nah, I'm not a witch. So, I mean, who are you going to believe? Yourself or the guy that's saying he's not a witch? Well, I mean, I guess we were wrong, and he was a witch and caught on fire that one day in the middle of the summer. Um, but I like our new drummer. He's cool. He just kind of hangs out, drums, keeps the beat. I didn't know it was scientifically possible for him to just blow up in flames. But well, I mean, when you're a witch, anything is possible. So Interesting. Very interesting. You guys, you guys weren't bamboozled at all by this happening? It was just... Well, we always thought he was a witch, so why would we be surprised? So, so you just moved on. Are you not listening to me? I don't know. We said want. we thought he was a witch, so when he caught on fire, it was no surprise. It's fair. It's fair. It's fair. I mean, but there's, you know, no moment of 
No. <laughs> None. Wow. Zero. I don't know how to move on from that. I'm losing some, some respect for Johnny, I mean, Jimmy Knuckles over here. That's okay. So, I mean, unfortunately, looks like that's, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, any last words of wisdom for us? Um, rock out with your socks out. Rock out with your socks out. You heard it here first, guys. Have a wonderful day. Welcome to the Director's Chair, where we talk about all things movies, TV, and even YouTube. I'm your host with the most, Thomas Clark. With me today, I have the lovely Katy Perry. <laughs> no, not that Katy Perry. How are you doing today, Miss Perry? I'm good, how are you? I'm all right, can't <laughs> complain too much. Now, Katy, word around the block is that the popular series, Star Wars The Clone Wars, is making a seventh season. Um, how do you feel about that? Are you upset that it's being streamed through Disney streaming platform and not something like Netflix? Um, it reminds me of my childhood, so I'm excited that it's kind of coming back because it's like nostalgic, mm -hmm. but I'm irritated because Disney is just essentially causing us to spend more money on mm -hmm. cheap, so. Well, that, would you say that you like the Star Wars franchise as a whole? I heard that the recent Solo movie was met with some mixed, uh, mixed reception. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Star Wars series. I got into it because of my father. Um, I know a lot of the mixed reactions from the Solo movie came kind of because there was uncertainty when they were whole making the script. There was a lot of like, um, how do I say this? Um, kind of like concerns and lab arguing. So I think it off put fans. And then when it finally came out, there, some people didn't like the casting for um, Han Solo because he didn't look like Harrison Ford, so there was a lot of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The teleprompter. <laughs> um, Star Wars, Star Wars. Um, um, so what is your favorite Star Wars movie? My favorite Star Wars movie has to be Empire Strikes Back. Why is that the best Star Wars movie? In my opinion, it just had a r really great twist in the whole franchise that kind of set off a new arc for Luke. With like, mm -hmm. I'm your father. Like, that's an iconic line. Did you know that a lot of people actually believed that um, George Lucas was pulling a fast one with that? That Darth Vader was actually not Luke's father. And that's why Yoda reiterates it at the beginning of Return of the Jedi. I did not know that. It's true. A lot of people were like, nah, can't be. That's interesting. Um, do you have any other favorite movies other than Star Wars? Um, other than Star Wars, hmm, I like Breakfast at Tiffany's mm -hmm. and like Roman Holiday that's with Audrey Hepburn. Those yes. are like really classic films and they're quite different from what I normally like, mm -hmm. which is more action and stuff like that. Well, what's your favorite action movie? have to go with classic James Bond, mm -hmm. Daniel Craig, it's fantastic. Daniel Craig, you say he's the best James Bond, not Sean Connery or Roger Moore. I kind of resonate more with um, Daniel Craig because he's kind of more my James Bond from mm -hmm. when I was kind of more like younger and as a child where as like the other gentlemen, they're like, they're good obviously, but I just think I resonate because I grew up with that James Bond. And do you have a favorite James Bond movie? Skyfall. Skyfall was very good in my opinion. Yes. Um, so just James Bond or do you like things like Mission Impossible oh. and uh, you like Mission Impossible? Mission Impossible. I'm a, movies in general other than horror movies I will almost always like. Not a fan of horror movies though. No. I'm, a, I'm jumpy. I'm a big fan of horror movies. You don't like any of them ever? No. Nothing. Nothing. I have a very imaginative like mind like I can get my psych myself out really badly so when October comes around what do you what do you watch you don't watch anything I watch Halloween Town <laughs> that's respectable <laughs> I'm okay with that I'm not I'm not even mad about that um, so what do you think do you have any ideas of uh, what might win best picture this year I do not actually I haven't really thought about it I know there's a lot of um, changes in the industry and mm -hmm. I know like with like Crazy Rich Asians which I thought is a great movie I saw that do you uh so you liked Crazy Rich Asians yeah I didn't get to see that what a 
just give me more about your thoughts on that. I thought it was a great kind of like a rom com because they kind of, like the industry kind of took a break from it because there was like a saturation at one point. So to have like a new one kind of come back was really nice. But I had a weird experience. The movie stopped playing halfway through the movie at a, like a critical moment, so it kind of killed the mood. Really? Yes. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, I think that's all the time we have for today. Um, please join us next time in the director's chair as we <laughs> bring along the man, the myth, the legend, Matt Dravick. Hello, and welcome to Fisher Sports Roundup. I'm your host, Matt Dravick, and with me is senior member of the Fisher football team, Chase Reeves. Chase, how are you feeling today? I'm good. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, no problem. Well, Chase, we brought you in today on behalf of the Fisher football team. Can you explain to the audience how your season has gone so far this year? So this year, we started off a little bit slow. We are 0-3. Uh, we uh, came out against uh, a ranked opponent in Washington Jefferson there from Pennsylvania. And they were uh, our starting opponent last year where we had a tough game against them and we lost it again this year. But uh, came back after two bye weeks, could have beat Ithaca, should have beat Ithaca, and uh, came out with a loss in the Courage Bowl against Brockport, who is another, they're a top five team in the nation right now. They are, uh, they're, they're clicking on all cylinders. They're like Wu-Tang, ain't Dude. nothing to, with. No, not at all. Man. Well, I'm sorry to hear the season has been going exactly how you planned, but how do you think uh, your next game against Utica is going to go? Uh, I think, man, in my opinion, I think my team, my players, anybody who's on my side, I always believe that in a given day, man, we, we can go out and compete with anybody, but uh, Empire 8's got good competition. I think they feel the same way. They, they, they can uh, take any game that they want. They're a physical team. I think we're going to have to be tough up front. Um, uh, one of our quarterbacks is uh, injured, so I think we're going to have to go back to um, our starting quarterback that we had last week, J.D., and uh, he's going to come back and hopefully take us to a win. Well, that's really cool. I like to hear all the confidence you have in your team. Um, but I think everyone's tired about hearing about the team, and they really want to know more about you. Uh, <laughs> recently, I heard some tough news um, last week. Care to tell the audience about what might have happened? Uh, so in week two against Ithaca, I came back after having a knee surgery, which was ACL reconstruction, and they fixed my meniscus. And that was at six months after surgery, six and a half months. Uh, and that's a little early on the return, so I just wanted to push myself, thought I could do it, and did. And I played the first half of the Ithaca game. And uh, once it got to almost halftime, I was just, blocking a guy and my knee just kind of gave out and tore it again. Ugh, that does uh, not sound too pleasant. Now, I do know from you walking around, just seeing you on campus, I mean, the big man that you are, um, I, I think this is the second, I mean, this has happened before, so care to tell us how you did it the, the first time? The first time was uh, a little bit more embarrassing and a little, uh, a little less fun of a story to tell, but it's, I was playing in my alumni high school charity basketball game, <laughs> and I got on the court for 30 seconds. <laughs> I was out there, and I was getting pressed, and I took the ball up the court, shot the ball from three-point arc, called money, missed it, come running back down the court on defense, and I jumped to defend like a 6'6 guy going up for a block, and I didn't even touch him, and I land, and my leg just snaps. <laughs> At an alumni basketball game? At an game. alumni basketball game. I'm one of the youngest guys there. Dude, we had one kid. I was the only guy that got hurt that game. We had a kid one time who was in hockey, and we were doing the alumni hockey game, and he like didn't want to wear a face mask, took a stick right to the teeth. It's like... <laughs> That's what you get, man. Ugh, right. I didn't stretch out. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, on the football front, overall, how would you rate your time as a member of the St. John Fisher football team? Out of what? Uh, mm, what scale are you most comfortable with? Uh, uh, definitely not the GPA scale. I think, <laughs> I think I'll probably go with out of 10, and I'm going to give it a 9.6, honestly. Uh, I, I love my time. I love my time with the football team. Um, I love being part of a group and just like working towards a goal. 
and I think with my skills and like what I can do, I feel like I can be a good part of like any machine like that. So nice. Now, that. kind of a less away from everything else. The last question I'm going to ask you: Who's your NFL team? My NFL team is the Los Angeles Chargers. Huh? I wish I could call them the San Diego Chargers still, but LA is our new home, and we're balling out this year. How do you feel about LA? Uh, I, I want to go out there. Actually, the guy who's actually directing this is he's a good friend of mine. His brother lives out there. Got to get out there. Sometime. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, that's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining us, and have a great day. Thank you. Welcome back, welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back to Popping Off. I'm your host, Nick Kinney. And today, joining me, we have medically induced Dan Verno. Thanks for coming on set, Dan Verno. Now, I love to warm up with a good old arm wrestling match. How do you, would you love to do an arm wrestling match? Or would you have any other games that you'd like to, to go? Okay, well, <laughs> this is going to be a great interview. Come here. <laughs> Come on. Ready? What? Just arm wrestle. Okay. Ready? The f this is like a flaccid penis. Jesus. Come on. Work with me, Dan. I, I don't know what you're trying to do. Okay. The war. One. Why? See, that's the thing. The war. Like, why are we going to war? Why can't we have thumb peace? You want to have thumb peace? What is what is thumb peace to you? Explain to me what thumb Let me peace see your is. Thumb. Okay. There's but then you win because you're on top. I w can I? Can we just do that? See, I don't like that. I don't like when you're on top. Why? You're an on top kind of guy. I don't know, man. I don't, th these questions, man, they're coming at me fast. I don't know if I'm ready for this. That screen just did something whack. I'm I'm scared, <laughs> uh, man. I'm scared. There's all these lights around me. There's this tree. I can't tell if it's real. Just pop off right now. That's the name of the show. Pop off. Whatever you I want. don't know what I have to say. I don't know what I have to pop off on. And I don't want to pop off on something random because I'll end up like popping off on you and I don't want to do that. Don't pop off on me. Pop off. You know who you could pop off on? Who? Joe Gallo. That man respects everything that you do. <sighs> Joe Gallo's a good kid. He's popping off, guys. Joe Gallo's just a good kid. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know where, where else to go with this one. Exactly. He's just... Uh, one of the best. One of the best. Uh, now, Dan, what do, you, what, what do you do during the days? It, too freaking much, dude. Let me tell you. Every day, there is something. <laughs> like, at least something and then something more. And then sometimes there's, like, something less, but then it always turns into something more. Just a lot of extra. You know what extra is? Yeah. Like, when you, when you have to add a dollar for extra cheese, like, that shit... So a dollar for cheese is whack. See, like, 50 cents is understandable, and, like, my family works in food, all right, so I know what cheese should cost. Cheese, a slice of cheese costs, like, three cents. Let's start there, okay? Wow. He's popping off, folks. <sighs> and it's just like, you know, why? Why are things the way that they are? Why are we in this room right now? Like, what is this? Who, or who designed this? Why is this a building? How did we get to this point? And it's like, so we deep. fill so our deep. rooms with fake leaves when there are real leaves God outside. And I'm just like, what is going on here? <laughs> That's how it feels to me, man. And it's just like, my hands are doing things I don't really understand and it's stressing me out and I need to clip my nails soon. They're getting a little long. What do I do with my hands? Uh, He's got a point. What do oh I do with gosh. them? Do I raise them up? Do I put them on the table? What do I do? You got me thinking. Why are my feet on the floor? Why aren't my hands my feet, my feet, my hands? We're out here. You're right. We're chilling now. Can I take the, I don't, never mind. I'm not going to take them off. You can take them off. We're, we're a relaxed kind of show. This is high-key comfortable. Is it? Yeah, like this is what Let me try. Uh, I shouldn't try it. I shouldn't really try it. 2018 Create Boys. You already know what it is, Create Society. Follow us on yeah. Twitter and Instagram. Let's, let's talk about Create Society. What you want to know? I want to know everything. How did this start? How is it going? Bruh, I Your just, life is kicking off, I man. pretty much made an email account, and now I have a brand. You got a brand. Yeah. Is it trademarked? Copyrighted? Uh, anything? Nothing? Nah, we're for the people. If you want to claim create, you can be create. That's how we roll. 
You already know. Now, can is. anybody join the society? Of yeah, creation? sure. Just send me your send me your junk. You got some art. You got some music. You got some I've got, spoken <laughs> word. You I've know, got some junk. Got. All right, I'll send you some junk. <laughs> Are we done here? I think you know what I. I do think we're almost done. I just wanted to say thank you for joining us today. Yeah, I really, man. I really loved you popping off, and it means a lot that you. You know, it just time. like it seems to me like I do all these things for you, and I just I don't know where do I get the return. I'll return. I'll, I'll return. I promise. I'll return. I'm a man of my word. Now that's all the time we got, and thank you for coming to popping off. We'll catch you next time. Hello, I'm Gala, and welcome to another episode of Traps Galore, the only show on network television where everyone across the political, the political board can agree on one thing, that it is disgusting. With me tonight as your special guest, you may know him as Alan Smithy, the star of such works as Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, Jurassic Park 3, The Room, and Pog Prolapse. We here at Trap School Lore know him as Thomas Clark. How you doing tonight, Thomas? What have you been up to? My name's actually Alex, but it's nice to meet you. Alex. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't it's, oh, it's okay. Common it mistake, was, I yeah, assume. Mixed up with the copy. Oh, it happens all the time. Well, good on you, man. Let's, let me ask. Let's get right down to it. Is it true that there was a thing on set between you and Val Kimmer during the filming of 50 Cent? And if so, did he really not know you were a man? It wasn't like a, you know, romance thing. It was a back alley brawl. It got brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Who won? It was a draw. A draw. I mean, we, we both sort of ended up limping out of there. Were there tears? Yeah. Oh, totally. On both sides? Yes. Oh, okay, good. All right, fascinating. Well, can you tell us who exactly you would consider as an ideal partner? And is it true that Jesus Christ is coming back? How are you feeling about that? Heaven or how? I mean, Jesus would be the ideal partner. I mean, he is, you know, holy after all. Right, he is, Like, yeah. he couldn't get more perfect than that. Right. Um, I don't know. But talk about the in-laws, oh my God. Yeah, oh you know, God, the yeah. big guy upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Imagine yeah. that family Rough dinner. Rough father. <laughs> yeah. All right, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Improvise. Improvise. Uh, all right. Stretch. <laughs> <laughs> You want me to stretch? I can, I mean, I can stretch. <laughs> Let's talk about the Marvel movies. What did yeah, you see? Uh, what's the most recent one that come out? Most recent Ant -Man one. Ant-Man and Wasp. Ant-Man Wasp. That was good. I liked that you one. You liked it? Yeah. What do you think about the first? First Ant-Man, good heist movie. Yes, definitely. Good heist movie. We like that. We like that in the series. Yes. Second one. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. No, I did too. I don't know if it was quite as good as the first one, but it was still who an played, enjoyable. Who movie. plays the wasp? Who's uh, Evangeline Lilly? Yes, I like her. Yeah, she's, great. she's good. I like uh, Michael Douglas yes. as Hank Pym. I like fan of Michael Douglas. all of that sort of stuff. Um, so, where do you think we move now? Going well, what's next? Are we? I mean, Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, Captain Marvel's next. And introducing the Skrulls. So that's that's something. Right, and, and so what do you think about that? And are we using? Do do we know who the main villain is? I know Ronan, the accuser. Yeah, is, he's going to be in that. I is don't he going to be in it, or is he in? The, or is he the villain? I don't know. I mean, the Skrulls are always going to be a part of it, and I, I don't know if he's working with them or you know, and if they're going to introduce the fact that some of the Avengers have been Skrulls the whole time. I mean, I right. don't know. It's interesting. So what thing. are your what are your hopes? What do we, what do you hope that what do you hope to know and to you know be able to look forward to? going into uh, Avengers 4? I don't know. Um, I guess definitely if some of the Avengers might have been Skrulls all along would be a big thing to know. Um, and I guess just where Captain Marvel will fit into all of it. Right. Um, where has she been? Yeah, where has she been this whole time? Right, exactly. Because Nick um, Fury had that pager. Right, so, exactly, like, which I think we saw in the trailer. Yes. Yes. It's there, so it's so it now now that makes sense. Yeah. But then okay, so we can discuss a few more theories. I mean, so is uh, is Loki the Hulk? I don't know. That would be an interesting idea. Or is that's Loki? Why, what I mean actually is Loki Bruce, Bruce Banner, Banner. That's that can't why it transform into the, the Hulk. Hulk. That would certainly be interesting. Um, that would you know explain why it couldn't turn into the Hulk. Um, but I, I get the feeling that Loki's really dead. At you this do? Point. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like after killing him off for fit, you know essentially 
falsely killing him off so many times they finally you know actually did it. Right. I mean, well, that would be a good death. Yes. That's. I mean, no one argues like that was an iconic part yes. of the opening of Infinity War. Yeah. I'm. I love Tom Hiddleston. Yes. It, Loki it, for the beginning phases of yes. the Marvel Cinematic Universe was the best villain, yes. un, unmatched probably until Thanos. Yeah. Um, but, Killmonger was great. Yeah, Killmonger was great. That's true. And I didn't. I didn't hate Hela. Yeah, but no. but Loki really was the strong yeah. point for a long time. He yes. had a great career, and I love Tom Hiddleston. But yeah. maybe it was time for him to go. But then, okay, where are Valkyrie? Where is yeah? Where's every? Where's uh, Korg? And where Korg, are all yeah, of I mean, them? Are they the all dead too? I don't know. Did they get no screen time? Yeah, I don't know. So it's definitely a, a good theory for sure. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Are you? Uh, what other characters are you most interested in? Like seeing what happens to him next up. Uh, I'm curious to see what they do with, I guess, you know, Iron Man and Captain America. Are they going to mend their relationship? Are they going to die or yeah. anything? Are they going to yeah. die or are they going to, you know... Are they going to die like this script yeah. died? Yes. I don't know. All right, well, we're going to wrap this thing up. That's Alex and I've been Joe, and uh, this has been another great episode of Trabs Galore slash Marvel. <laughs>